Hello and welcome to me basically just listing the data dump that just happened on Miss Pandaria. I'm gonna be probably shooting in my opinions because there was a lot of freaking stuff. Uh, there should be videos and pictures playing in the background, so let's begin. The first thing that caught my attention, it was also the first on the list, was I'm not sure why they told us this, but the final patch of Mr. Pandaria, the Alliance and Horde, gonna gather together, do a siege on Orgrimmar, and try to take Grosh out of War Chief of the Horde, which is pretty freaking bananas. Okay. During Miss Pandaria, there is going to be a massive storyline, like half of the expansion. It's going to be Horde versus Alliance, like a giant all-out war. And it says, when one side commits war crimes, it's all a downward spiral. So, during your questing experience in Miss Pandaria, 85 to 90, there will be two parts. The beginning will be exploring Pandaria, helping the locals finding out where they have been for 10,000 years and why. And then the second half is going to be just all-out war, Alliance versus Horde. They said they are going to try to stop doing just color changes on mobs. So, like, you, you know, like, the Night Elf mounts, they're all the same, except they're just recolored. So they're going to try to make everyone really unique. The Pandarian, like the main one that allies with the Horde, or the Alliance rather, is Asa Cloudsinger, A-Y-S-A Cloudsinger. And she follows the path of Tushi, uh, T-U-S-H-U-I-E. And that's like the good one, they believe in meditation training and are ha carry good morals. The main one for the Horde is going to be J.I. Firepaw. He studies under Hujin philosophy, H-O-U-J-I-N. And he believes you need to defend your family at all costs, and he's usually the first one in the battle. Chen Stormstelt will be making a, will be making lots and lots of appearances. He might be in beginning cities being like, hey, we're pandas. And the Hujin, the philosophy that Firepaw studies under, they are very impulsive as you would probably imagine. And in the land of Pandaria, negative emotions such as fear or anger, it takes on a physical form, which goes by the Sha, and they're just like evil. And mortals, who are unwary, it says, they can become possessed by the Sha and be like vessels of pure hatred. A new race is the Jinyu, J-I-N-Y-U. They're a fish race, they're not Murlocs. They are elder and wise. They can tell the future by listening to rivers, and they side with the alliance. And they are at war with a race of rat-type things called the Hosen. The Hosen ally with the Horde, and they are described as 14-year-olds with knives and machine guns running through the jungle. They are all over Pandaria, as are the Jinyu. There are two kinds, those that reside in the jungle and those that are in the mountain. Pandaren's mount of choice will be a cloud serpent, and I believe anyone can get one after doing 20 dailies, and f you first have to pick a color of egg, which will be the outcome of your, it'll be the final color of your serpent. A talent tree-esque way to like train them and whatnot. You can name all your pets, you can change pets mid-fight. You can fight random critters in the wild to level up. There will be a hundred plus pets. And here's random stuff. There are no new race models as of yet. I mean like the races you can play, Jedi, Human, Orc. They don't have new models yet, but they are working on it. It's confirmed. And they said maybe dwarves will be ready at launch. There will be a, an eleventh character slot added. They're going to up the textures. Every pet you have from pet battles is going to be account-wide. AoE looting, that means, say like, you're farming silk, because this is an actual thing that happens. You run th through Scarlet Monastery, and you just drop down an AoE, and they're all dead. Now, instead of looting each one individually, you loot one, and all the loot that's around you will go into that one loot uh, box, so you can loot everything at once. They're 
putting in new guild perks, and they're getting rid of have group will travel, because this expansion is supposed to be about exploration. Now, this is something that's very weird. It says you can scale down your level and power to play with your friends. So, I guess you can, like, just turn level 40. I'm not sure how that's going to work. The beta will be changing soon. Warlocks are getting a lot of changes. They may add female variations of the current pets. So, like, uh, what are they called? Void walkers, I believe. There could be, like, a female version. Destruction warlocks slowly build up fiery force and eventually light on fire. That's just what it says. They said they want minor glyphs to be fun. So, one minor glyph for a mage would teleport you to the Dalaran crater, and one for warrior would be your commanding shout fears critters. It's it's just like fun stuff. And they said this is not announced yet. What I'm about to say is, but they haven't announced what major glyphs are going to be changed. They say major glyphs will shock and amaze people. Very ominous. We're getting towards the end. The Gate of Sitting Sun is a dungeon. At the Great Pandarian Wall is a race called the Mantid. Try to break it down. Break it down. Bum, 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 bum. There will be two world bosses plus a launch. And then they want talent trees to make you feel unique. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and all that stuff. Good. as a mount, you have to train it, which sounds pretty interesting, so I don't know if that'll increase its flight speed, or I don't know. There will be seven new zones, some of which are to be announced. The first on the list is the Jade Forest. It is the beginning zone. It has your first dungeon, which is the Temple of the Jade Serpent. The the last emperor, as, he has, it, as it's described, he defeated the Shaw of Doubt in the temple of the Jade Serpent. The, this temple is overwhelmed by dark energy, so you're going to have to go in there and kick the dark energy out. Over all land of Pandaria, there are four ancestors who protect it. In this land, the Horde will come up in the south and the Alliance north, and in the middle, there will just be all-out battle between the two. Eventually, not like right off the bat. Second on the list is Valley of the Four Winds. This is where Pandarins farm. They grow massive, massive ve vegetables because in another place that has like magical water, it'll drain down and it makes their veggies massive. There is a farmer's market here which will provide dailies, like vendors and stuff. Okay, so here is the new prof profession, which I think is just awesome because you can finally have your own little place. Farming. You get, you can clear a plot of land, plant seeds, and come back the next day. Basically, Farmville. Not really at all, actually. Through your reputation, you can buy things to decorate, which I think is just awesome. You can like buy pigs and slop, or an apple orchard. In the Valley of Four Winds, there is a dungeon, the Storm Stout Brewery, and you have to go in there with Chen and beat people up. There are monkeys who inv have invaded here and just get drunk. The really old beer in here, it'll, it like goes bad and turns into ghosts. I'm not sure what's up with that. The next place is the Krasarang Wilds. K-R-A-S-A-S-R-A-N-G. Wilds. And it is a coastal rainforest. It's on the coast and it's a rainforest. And here reside the Mogu. They are the original rulers of Pandaria. Over 10,000 throne or seat of the Mogu is located in the wilds. And this is where the sacred pools are that drain down to create the massive vegetables. These pools are like super magical. The Alliance and Horde are going to fight over them. Instead of like Dalaran, the Alliance and Horde will have their own separate cities, such as like uh, uh, Stormwind and Orgrimmar. They're the the creatures tasked with protecting the sacred pools are called the Golden Lotus. There's no pictures, I don't believe. They have been chosen by the Celestials to guard the zone. Now, I have no idea what the Celestials are. And there's not enough of them to protect the pools, so you have to help them, and they don't trust you at first. You have to gain rep, I'm assuming. 
Alright, on the PvP, there will be one new arena, a battleground. There's going to be two battlegrounds, one new arena at launch, at least. The battleground is the Temple of Mogu. It is like an actual zone in the place. And the objective is there's an artifact that you collect, and it has a dot curse, a damage over time. So when you pick it up, you start taking damage, and it keeps happening.